So imagine that we have a model that we deployed to production, let's say the churn model, and we start measuring concept drift. Uh, on the left side here, we see the reference data, and on the right side, we have the analysis data or the monitor data. And we see that there's maybe some small chunk, a lot of weird stuff going on uh, in the first chunk, but we see also that the confidence band is huge. So we're actually not sure whether there's a drop in performance. Maybe that was just a very small chunk. As I mentioned, if there is, we, the chunks are small enough, we cannot trust fully. And we know we can trust because the confidence band is huge. And then uh, we see that the, for the first few months, everything is fine. But come March, March, maybe April 2019, uh, we see a significant drop in performance uh, due to concept drift. So our performance impact estimation of concept drift shows that F1 uh, dropped by approximately 0.05, which is worrying because we don't want basically any drop that exceeds, let's say, 0.01. And when we look at the realized performance, uh, we do see that indeed the drop is in reality slightly lower than 0.05, let's say 0.04, but the model was able to cut, or we were able to actually quantify that the concept drift is almost fully responsible for this drop in performance. So then what we can do, we can look at it and say, performance dropped as much as uh, concept drift indicates that it should have dropped, uh, which means that we can fully attribute change in performance to concept drift, which means that we can just use retraining to solve the problem. How can we do it? So first, uh, let's think about why do we actually need to retrain when there's concept drift. So concept is what we train our model to capture. It's this pattern that we want our model to capture. Uh, so if there is a change in that pattern, it means that there is a change in the concept that our model was trying to learn. So it's no longer a relevant concept that the model has learned. So we need to retrain it. But so we have our RCD, reverse concept drift detection. We detect concept drift, we trigger retrain. We retrain our model over here. Then we need to make sure that the retraining was actually correct because there's a million different things that can go wrong when we train our model. Uh, maybe there's some data quality issue, maybe there's strong coverage shift, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to validate whether the performance is still good. We can use our performance estimation algorithms for it. And the reason specifically I mentioned performance estimation here as the best way to validate our models is that we could technically uh, just wait for more data and use um, realized performance. So just measure the performance, but we can use um, estimate performance immediately after we train our model. And even if we use all our data to retrain our model, because MCBP does not need the labels. It only needs model inputs. So as new model inputs come in, we don't have to wait for the, uh, for the labels, for the targets. We can immediately estimate the level of performance. And if level of performance after retraining is satisfactory, then we can actually deploy it to production. So this should be done in some kind of sandbox environment. We don't deploy the model yet to reduce the risk that the model is actually much worse than it used to be, which is possible and has happened to a lot of our users. Uh, and then we deploy our model and we continue monitoring. So that way we will have this kind of automated trigger for retraining, automated validation, automated deployment, given that everything is fine. And I don't advocate to fully automate everything. In theory, it's possible, but this loop is already much better and much more robust than just automatically, automatically retraining, let's say every week or every month, which uh, is something that some of you might do now. So. We retrain our model and how does it look? So if you look at it, we're gonna see that there is certain uh, drop in, uh, so there is certain concept drift. And now we're gonna retrain our model on the data from around here. And then we're gonna deploy it on the future data. So we need to kind of extend this period. And we see now that there is no concept drift. It basically hovers around zero. So we're able to actually accurately capture the new concept after we retrain the data on all historical data. Uh, so we don't need to only retrain it on just the new concept, even though somehow, and sometimes this might be better than retraining on the entire data set, but I'm not gonna go into details here because that's another half an hour, uh, one hour of a uh, workshop to decide when to, uh, on what data you need to retrain your model. So let's say that we're gonna retrain on all our past data, including the new data of concept drift. And we see that the concept drift has been resolved. And again, same thing here. Uh, we see that the model performance has reasonably increased 
Uh, there is some drop here, but that might be just stochastic drop because we don't really uh, know what is the size of the chunks here. And we see that there was significant drop here that there was then resolved with retraining. So retraining uh, based on concept drift generally works. Uh, and especially if we can validate the networks, then we have automated, as I already mentioned, automated system for retraining our models, validating it works, deploying to production and continuous monitoring.